can see that. Hi, Mark. Hi. How hey. Good. How are you? Hi, Valen. It's nice Hi, baby. In virtually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. <laughs> So, uh, Mark, I see you know uh, Bavin. So, yeah. where are you from and what do you do? Uh, I'm from Montreal and uh, I work in management. I manage an artist called Emma Becco. She's a rapper from here. Um, she also used to be in the duo Heart Streets, in case you know that. And um, I also work at a record label, Simon Records. And I work in um, marketing mostly. Yeah. Sick. Awesome! Great. Hey. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> for having this is me. the first time I didn't I didn't know any of this, but that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point of our events to learn something new. So there you go. Um, awesome! I love Montreal, by the way. So yeah, where are you guys? Where's everyone from? I'm from New York. Okay. Toronto, <laughs> Mississauga for me. Yeah. New I'm York. From oh. Yeah. Wait, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Dia. No, I was just gonna say New York. That's it. New York in the house. <laughs> I'm from Ohio, but I live in Atlanta. Okay. I thought everyone would be from Canada, but it's cool. There's no, no, no I'm just kidding. We love Bob. We love Canada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all over. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, yeah. Jessica. Sorry, random side. <laughs> so we hi Courtney. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. I am a songwriter and I'm also managing an artist by the name of Exclusive right now. And I am from Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. Perfect. Ohio in the house. We in here. Yeah. <laughs> Also, let's see who else. Hi, Travis. All right, I'm just gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at work right now, so I'm gonna be uh, camera off. But it's nice to be here. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Travis. And I also encourage everyone to keep their cameras on if they're if they can. Um, just because it's a networking event so everybody can get to see your beautiful smiles and interact um, with one another. Um, it's going to be a little bit of an intimate event. So um, later on, we're going to, you know, ask each other questions and get to know each other a little better. Um, I'm just going to give it another minute to see if anybody else um, hops on. And if not, we'll just go ahead and uh get started um just give me one moment cool i hope everyone has really cool weekend plans i know it's saturday uh <laughs> and lockdown yeah i'm locked down too there's not that much yeah. <laughs> justine you muted yourself Oh, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, oh, that sucks. In New York, we're not on lockdown just yet, but they just like um, restaurants and everything's, everything has to close at like 10 p.m. And New Yorkers, we're so like used to everything being open all the time. So this entire experience has been <laughs> tough on <laughs> everyone. Yeah. Uh, hey, Chris. What's I'm up? sorry, like down here, I feel like COVID does not exist. Yeah. Um, Southerners <laughs> refuse <laughs> to acknowledge anything. Um, <laughs> so it's, bus it's been business as usual since everything opened up in May. Like, hasn't been a, any type of restriction, no nothing. I stay in the house, but no. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Atlanta for is still rocking per usual. <laughs> I know. I've seen videos of people in Atlanta in clubs and everything. Yeah. Lounges, so. all of that. Um, it's, it's interesting, yes. but yeah. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Um, I actually live in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I live in Atlanta and people are, you know, people are people. <laughs> are they are. I don't know if people are people, <laughs> but many people are not, so. 
Yeah, no, I have a friend who's also um, from Georgia, and he was like, he experienced culture shock going to visit his family because he's like wearing a mask and like trying to be distant, and he was like, it is the same, like if nothing was happening, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it depends on where you are in Atlanta, like where I am in, uh, or where you are in Georgia, where I'm in in Atlanta, like, I feel like just the normal stuff, like going to the grocery store, like if you have to run an errand, most of the people I see are in masks. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also like clubs that are open and stuff. So it's kind of like, why go to a club if you're going to wear a mask, but also right. why to go to a club at all. <laughs> what area um, are you in? I live in Fayetteville. Oh, okay. I'm in East Atlanta. Oh, okay. So that's not too far. It's like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, oh, hey, Lottie. Thank you for joining us Hi, today. Lottie. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hello. I love your hair. You always have the flyest outfits, Lottie, like uh, every single time. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Um, again, hey, Chris. Uh, happy birthday. Chris actually just oh. uh, released his EP. So I don't know if he's just still hung over from <laughs> his birthday celebration <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully he can hear us and um all right so we have a couple people here so i'm just gonna go and get started on uh what we're all here for which is some networking tips so i encourage everyone to have a pen and paper ready to take notes and um Keep your microphones muted uh, for most of the event. So if any there's any background noise, you know, there aren't any interruptions. Um, so I wanted to start out with why we're hosting this event. So we at Fruitness Media, our mission is to help you, essentially. We want to help people in our community flourish and be able to build a career that they're truly passionate about. We're constantly reached out to by artists, producers, and ours songwriters, sound engineers, entrepreneurs, and people who simply just want to hear um, new music. We get hundreds of searches a month because our message is clear. As a global media company, we want to educate and connect aspiring artists and entrepreneur entrepreneurs about the music business. So before I get started on uh, networking in the music business, I wanted to talk a bit about networking in general. But um, before I start, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you want to get from a community of peers and mentors? Um, anybody want to chime in? I'll jump in. Um, I think as a woman and more specifically a black woman in uh, the music industry, um, I think the opportunities for mentors, everyone claims they're there, but most of the people who I see who talk about mentorship are actually on the business side. I don't want to say business side because it's all business, but you know, the non-creative side of music as opposed to most of the time when you see black women, they're performers, whereas I'm a songwriter <clears throat> and a little bit of a producer. And I feel like most of the time when I'm looking for mentorship, I don't see that many people who are doing that type of thing, or even like an engineer, honestly, like reaching back out. Um, so I think mentorship would be a cool thing to have for people in marginalized communities. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, totally agree. And that's um, one of the reasons as a woman of color led company, why uh, we started Finesse Media, because we wanted to help out people of color um, get opportunities that sometimes um, can be a little bit difficult for us, you know? So thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Um, anyone else? Yeah, um, I think for me, what's important is just, I guess, some kind of like accountability. Yeah. So I guess maybe someone or people that can check in and be like, hey, I know I said I was working towards like this goal and I actually did A, B, and C to, you know, be closer to like achieving that. I think that'd be cool because I know we're all trying to make moves and do stuff. Exactly, exactly, for sure. You know, building relationships and having accountability, buddy. I have an accountability bu buddy. Shout oh, out girl, to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? 
want to share their thoughts? Okay, so I will um, talk about some networking goals. So before I start out, um, I want to talk about um, a little personal experience I had. Um, so, you know, for a long time, I actually believed I was terrible at uh, networking, despite having so many people tell me that I was a social butterfly, that I was super personable, and that I could make friends easily. According to a lot of people, I was great at networking. But you know what my response used to be? No, I suck. I'm not good at networking at all. It's easy to talk to someone at a bar over cocktail. And it's not really getting me a job that I'm passionate about or like getting me a higher salary in any way. Like I just didn't see the value in uh, my skill. So I was looking at it incorrectly and honestly subconsciously putting myself down. Um, my definition of networking was like going to a boring seminar, you know, awkwardly standing around, you know, maybe with a business card, watching other people compete, you know, to get someone's attention that, you know, that they would think would be valuable to check out their business. Like, I just saw it as something really competitive and kind of not my thing. So a while back, I was watching this TED Talk about networking. And um, one thing that really resonated with me, um, it, it talked about the idea of changing the way that we think about networking. Um, so it talked about how like, networking isn't about meeting strangers. It's about understanding the network that's already around you. So from that point on, I kind of learned to use my own network. Who in my friend group is willing to help me out? You know, um, re um, rekindle, you know, friendships or, you know, old contacts that I haven't and see what they're doing, things like that. Um, and because of that, you know, connecting through friends of friends and building relationships and also something that's really important, finding non-work reasons to connect with folks. Because, you know, if you're just hitting someone up because you need a favor, that's not a great way to build a, a relationship. So, you know, finding non-work reasons to connect with folks that I want to reach out to. And as a result, because I redefined my definition of networking and started using my own network of people, it's given me the opportunity, you know, to partner up with Alexi, who is the founder of Finesse Media, to be a part of this wonderful community of artists and reach out to people who I would have never thought I'd be able to reach out to. Like, sometimes I have to pinch myself because, you know, an artist I admire or, you know, a producer really, you know, or, or Grammy award winning artist hit me back up. And I'm just like, me? you know, like, oh, cool. So, um, so I'm no longer intimidated to reach out to people because I want to build a relationship first before anything else. I'm not, you know, always just reaching out to somebody, like I said before, because I need a favor. I, I want to get to know them. I want to be able to help them out in any way that I can. Um, so I want to talk about three main points in networking, things to ask yourself before reaching out to someone, or, you know, it's good to ask yourself these questions so that you're also better prepared. Um, the first one would be purpose. What do you want? Define your goals. And then who could help you attain that? Be, be clear with what you want. So I'd actually highly recommend writing a list of goals that you have it helps you stay focused and you can always review it and change it around. You know, people's goals change as time goes on. And also what's really important um, that I've learned is to keep a list of the people that you want to reach out to. Doesn't matter how big or small you think they are. It only takes one moment or a person to open up a door of opportunities. I'd recommend making a list about a hundred people and you don't have to do that all um in one day but just like over time adding on people in your network first that you know and then adding people that you would like to get to know um and that you you know like to connect with my second uh point in networking 
would be competency. Have you done your research? Do you know what you're talking about? Um, it's important to research your industry. You don't have to be an expert or anything like that or know everything, but we all know, you know, we all know that in this industry or any industry for that matter that we're constantly learning. However, it's, you want to at least know your basics and be able to keep up with others in your industry or in this industry. Um, learn about everybody's role especially if you're trying to build a network. It shows that you care about not just yourself and your work, but you're interested in what others are achieving. You know, you wanna be humble and you wanna show people that you're willing to help them out. Um, being knowledgeable about your industry also shows that you're passionate about it because, you know, when you're, when you're passionate about something, all you wanna do is read about it and talk about it and things like that. And if you're reaching out to people and you don't, know anything at all, it shows that you don't care and you don't want to make that impression. Um, and then the third one would be persistence. Be persistent because you'll most likely hear no's until you get one yes. Our team literally sends out hundreds and hundreds of messages a week, like all the time between reaching out to booking our like next guests or speaker for an event or just to market our event and get people to join in um we never stop we constantly have to do it um and no we don't get you know a response every single message that we send out um but we do get responses and honestly when we do get a positive response it's rewarding um because it shows that our effort is paying off and the people that are paying attention are the people that we want in our community. So be persistent, you know, it definitely will pay off. And remember, networking is a skill set. Um, so now I want to talk to, can you go over the first one again? Okay, sure. So the first point was um, having a purpose. Like, what do you want? and who could help you attain that. So I, as I said before, write down a list of people you already know that you wanna either rekindle a relationship with or that you already connect with, but maybe you wanna ask them for advice or help them out with something. And then people who you want to reach out to and make, have a goal of like a hundred people. And that list is gonna to continue to change um, over time, depending on your goals and that's okay. And, but, you know, always keep those people in your contact list because you don't know if like five years from now, you guys are gonna meet up again or you're gonna need that contact. So just, oh, it's always great to have a contact list. Um, so now that um, I've gone over kind of some general tips on networking, um, I wanted to talk about, you know, making it in the industry these pointers along with the pointers you know i just talked about will help you become a more marketable artist or entrepreneur as an artist or entrepreneur you want to ask yourself who's my target audience whose attention do i want and three how do i get their attention asking yourself these three questions can open doors to more pr press coverage it can connect you to the right people in the music industry and also gain more followers and listeners, whether it's on your social media, whether it's on your Spotify, Apple Music, whatever the case may be, your LinkedIn. Um, if you're having fi issues figuring out who your target audience is, ask yourself, um, who's following you on social media and who is your current fan base? What artists do your followers like? And why do they like you? Or if you're an artist manager, why do they like your particular artist? What is it about them that makes them stand out? Um, and also what's your age bracket? You know, the way you market yourself, if you're like a teen pop artist, is gonna be different than if, you know, you're Migos. <laughs> so, you know, knowing your age bracket is also important and it's, it's a great marketing skill. Um, 
Again, asking yourself these questions will help you define your brand and market yourself more efficiently. Remember, you need professional, aesthetically pleasing, purpose-focused, attention-grabbing branding. It needs to be created with your identity and target market clearly defined and in focus. Um, so does anyone have any questions so far? No? Cool. So um, I wanted to, um, now that we talked a little bit about that, I wanted to talk about, um, now that you know your target audience, I wanted to talk about like reaching out to press, uh, whether you're an artist manager or an artist or, or whomever. Um, so you wanna get more or better press coverage, right? So in order to do that, knowing your audience helps with this. When you know your audience and what press caters to them, it gives you a competitive advantage because you're becoming what a pu publication audience would enjoy before you've even started your press campaign or pitched yourself. As I said before, remember networking is a skill. And, you know, that goes back to our point with doing your research before hitting anybody up. Um, you want to keep in mind what's in it for the blockers slash press people. They need content their audience finds relevant. Your focus should be on how you, how giving you coverage will provide content their audience wants. You know, of course you want to be in a magazine or of course you want to be in the next hot blog or whatever, but like if your music isn't going to get, you know, their uh their page, you know, likes or clicks or or readers, it's not you're not going to get anywhere with them. Um so ask yourself before pitching a press release, again, what kind of audience does this blog magazine have? How large is it? How engaged is their readership? Do they have a strong social media presence? Because if you wanna gain exposure, you wanna make sure that also you're pitching to people who will give you the exposure that you want. Um, otherwise it's counterproductive. Um, also, who and what do they write about? If you sound like Ariana Grande and they write about the Foo Fighters or Metallica, chances are they're not the right fit for you and they're not worth pursuing. Um, one of the easiest ways to find appropriate blogs is to keep tabs on similar artists that are the next step above you or the artists that you represent if you're an artist manager. If you see that these artists are consistently... Oh, okay. Sure, so I'll go a little slower if I'm going a little fast um, for anybody. And if anybody needs me to repeat anything, just let me know. So the first point was, what kind of audience does this blog magazine have? And then the second point is, who and what do they write about? So as I was mentioning before, if you sound like Ariana Grande and they write about, you know, the Foo Fighters or Metallica, it's not worth pursuing. So one of the easiest ways to find appropriate blogs is to keep tabs on similar artists that are the next step above you. If you see that these artists are consistently getting coverage on certain media outlets, you can attempt to do the same by contacting the journalist or publication direct, directly. And then C, when do they write about music? Many outlets tend to go for new releases, so pitch ahead of time. Send private links to your content ahead of its release. Um, and if you're looking for a place to find publicists or ways to connect with bloggers, um, you know, a &Rs, or anyone in the music industry, I suggest um, going on Facebook and there's a ton of um, music industry groups and, and it's a great way to connect with other people in the industry. Um, one specifically that I would recommend for press would be Press Connect. Um, I constantly see people, you know, uh, bloggers looking for artists that they want to feature and artists also, you know, looking for new music magazines or blogs to be featured on. It's just a great way to connect and um, it's an active page. So it's not one of those like, um, places that 
you know, you join the group and then it's completely in, inactive. And again, that's Press Connect on Facebook. So, so some of you may be wondering, okay, great. And now I know how to get myself into a blog, but how do I get my music into the hands of an a &R, a film director or a music supervisor? So to put it simply, the internet. The internet is your best friend with like Google, LinkedIn. There's so many ways to connect with, pe with people. You can reach anyone at any point from anywhere in the world, but you have to be smart about it. Um, so the best way to get in touch um, with most music industry professionals is one, music, check out music blogs again. Writers often interview a &Rs, producers, or whoever the case may be, who ex and those people explain how to get a demo to them. And you should do exactly what they tell you to do to get your music heard. Um, so, you know, listen to what they have to say and send out your demo. Two, Google. Search your favorite record label. Their pa Google panel should pull up info about the label and go to their contact page. A great thing to do is write down what record labels you'd like to be signed to and what artists they typically sign. So that's really important, like in terms of branding yourself and knowing what you want as an artist, like, and also just attaining your goals and like, I wanna be signed to Universal, I wanna be signed to Sony, or I wanna be signed to this indie label. What is it that they're looking for? What um, artists are they signing that are, that are new and you know what's their upcoming rising star so and then three would be youtube videos panel discussions so industry professionals sit on panels and talk about what they do and what music they're looking for so search their name find their company and their email this I can personally attest to considering the amount of ARs, music supervisors, producers, industry executives we've had, like the head of ANR for Wayno's record label, Loki L. We've had Samaj, which is the ANR of Dave East. We've had Little Baby's producer, Young TN. And then just last week we had um, Hunter George, which is the executive director of the Guild of Music Supervisors. They've happily shared ways on how to reach out to them and what they and labels are looking for in an artist. I love panels for this reason and our panel specifically because you're able to have more intimate interactions with industry professionals and add them to your network. Um, when you attend these events and in particular like finesse media events, because they're a lot more intimate and you know, we always have like a Q and A uh, session you want to have questions prepared for them because it shows that you're interested. It shows that, you know, you're prepared and you're ready to work and that you're taking advantage of the time that they're taking, um, taking out, out of their day to provide, you know, support. So ask those questions. And again, it's a great way to show that you are interested and you're curious and um, you want to stand out. And number four would be Instagram, social media. Again, um, I many times use I, IG to get acquainted with people I wanna reach out to. Now I'm not recommending anybody to spam anyone's DMs or to ran randomly send out music, but getting to know who you're about to pitch to and their following is just as important. Plus you never know who may follow you and check your work um, and your stories. So recently, literally just last week, a friend of mine who's a videographer um, got a personal message from Kim Kardashian and it wasn't a Kim Kardashian robot, it was her. And she was like, oh my God, I love your work. Yeah, <laughs> Kim Kardashian. And no matter how you feel about Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian family, they're influential influential as fuck so so and she's connected to kanye so definitely make sure your instagram is consistent and shows your best work and that you have a brand because if he had an inconsistent uh ig with like selfies of himself or blurry unprofessional photos of himself or you know 
he puts in his bio that he's a videographer, but there's just two or three videos of his work. I'm pretty sure Kim Kardashian wouldn't be hitting him up. So that's very important. Keep up with your social media, keep up with your IG, make sure your content is fresh, it's good, because you honestly never, never know. And I'm pretty sure that Kim Kardashian got a hold of him because he's worked so much with like different high fashion brands that someone probably referred her to his work. That's why it's super important to have your social media up and ready at all times because you never, never know who is talking about you. Um, and also to be kind because uh, if you're not a great person, people are not going to recommend you no matter how great your work is. So five would be resources and magazines. So magazines can be a great source to finding an industry expert's contact info. Billboard Magazine and Hollywood Reporter put together latest industry news and who's behind them and they'll leave their contact information. Also, I recently discovered this great site called musicconnection.com um, and they have an extensive and updated list and according to, the, to them, they updated it this year of a rs film TV execs, and music supervisors, booking agents, like literally anything and everything. I, I don't remember all of the different lists of contacts that they have because it was that extensive. So again, that is musicconnection.com or you can Google like music connection artist directory. So I would definitely, definitely give that a try. So I wanted to check in on how everybody was doing because I know I've been talking for a little bit. Um, just give me a thumbs up if you think that this is helpful so far. And if there's anyone who has any tips or resources of their own that they'd like to share. I know Lottie had some tips or maybe had some tips that she'd like to share if you want to jump in for a second. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna drop, the, sorry if it's like loud by the way, I, I live with my family and it's just never quiet here, so. No worries, I totally can't. Like, no, it's like literally never quiet, it's the absolute worst. Um, so I'm dropping something in the chat as like a guide so people can kind of follow along with me. This is specifically for how to network in the music industry, but I guess technically it could be used for anything, um, depending on what you want to do. So I have like a little, I think it's called an acronym. I never know words, but um, you guys know like the luxury car, like Rolls Royce Wraith. So it's, it's loosely based off of that Wraith, R-A-A-F. So a lot of these things were actually already touched upon. So you did a great job just like detailing that. Um, but so the first thing to do is research. So I have an act, a mini acronym underneath research. So one, research your industry, two, research the person you're trying to reach out to, three, research your ask. So essentially what you're trying to, to get. Um, so that's IPA, industry, person, ask. Um, for a template on how to do that, either via email or actually yeah, it's pretty much going to be via email is, is the best if you could have that. Um, check out my Twitter. I have a TikTok on it, but it's also connected. It was in response to um, the, uh, damn it, I forget his name, but basically he's an executive who works at AudioMax slash DJ Booth, and he had like a whole e email template on how to reach out to people for, um, whether it's like a cold email, cold email meaning you have no connection to them, or you can use it for like a warm lead, which means you might've met them once or twice. Um, so you guys can check that out. But like she was saying earlier, research, research, research. It's so important. If somebody is an A and R at Interscope, and you're asking them about how you can get your song to Beyonce, you're gonna look really dumb because Beyonce is with Sony. So it's like little things like that. Like you just gotta make sure like you're really specific about what you're doing, and also just know like what their role is and how you can specifically help them. I get. DMs all the time about like I see that you're a producer and I'm like no I'm not it literally says in my bio that I'm a songwriter so right there and then I'm deleting that DM because like you did you didn't you couldn't even read my bio which is like the easiest thing to look at and then thirdly know your ask because a lot of times people are like I would just love your help on this and it's just like that's 
so broad and vague that you're most likely not going to get a response. The more specific you are about what you're looking for, the easier it is for people to be able to respond to you. They might just be like, no, I can't help you. And if they like you and your response is good, they might be like, I can't help you, but I know someone who can, or they will be able to help you. It just depends. Um, okay. Uh, second thing, A is to attend. So attend every and any event that you can. Um, so a lot of people call me like the networking queen because I literally will go to like six things a week. Like, and I have them all in my calendar. And depending on what it is, it could be anywhere between like 30 minutes to two hours at a time. But um, right now with COVID, almost everything is actually, yeah, pretty much everything is virtual. Uh, so it, in a way, it makes it easier to network. So it's like we have, you know, communities like this. Um, but if you check those two links, those are Instagram, my Instagram posts, so like communities you guys should know about that tend to have like pretty good events. Obviously, Finesse Media is listed as one of them because you guys are great. So shout out to Finesse. Um, but honestly, like, I'm, I'm sure you guys have all heard the quote that um, half of the battle is just being in the room. So like being in the virtual room is a thing. Like there are some people I've talked to, like high level people, they'll be like, oh yeah, I recognize you from like this series or from this event or from this whatever. Um, and I think that also goes for um, social media, like comments. So if there are certain people that you like on social media, like there are people I have like their notifications on and I'll make sure like anytime they post, I like it and I comment it. <laughs> like almost without fail they know me so at a time and back when like the outside was open when i was doing that i'd meet people in person they were just like oh the name like it sounds really familiar da, 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 da. and then of course the first thing anyone asks is like what's your instagram and then like you follow them and then that's how they know that they know me so and it might seem like stalkerish or relentless but honestly these people usually have tens of thousands if not millions of followers so you being consistent is, is just gonna like stand out like in their mind um, okay, third thing, apps. So um, I'm sure by now, pretty much everyone's heard of this app called Clubhouse. I put the link there. Right now it's in beta, so it's invite only. It's a really interesting app. And I think Billboard actually just had an article about it. And a couple of my friends are mentioning it. I was like, oh, hey. But essentially what Clubhouse is, is called drop-in audio. So just think about if Twitter and LinkedIn were kind of like one profile together, but everything was like audio. So it's been a really interesting way to network because there are people kind of like at all levels. It's like people who are where you're at in your career, people who are where you aspire to be and people who are aspiring to be like you. So it gives you the opportunity to kind of be able to talk to all those people. Um, again, right now it is in private beta, so it's not easy for everyone to access it. But if you do know someone who's on the app, and you download the app and make an account, it will give them a notification for you to get on. That's how I got on personally. It wasn't sent to invite. So I definitely encourage everyone to at least try it out. The worst that can happen is that you end up on the wait list, but the longer you wait, the longer it is for you to be able to get on because once they do open it to the public, it's just gonna be an order of who made an account. Um, other apps, everyone, obviously everyone knows about Decal or I hope everyone knows about Decal. <laughs> um, in order for you to be able to keep your life organized, you need to have a schedule, you need to have a calendar. I personally love Gcal because I have multiple different email accounts and I use it for different things. And I could color code and I could set like a timer of like how often I want to be reminded and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My Gcal is like, everything is blocked. Like even when I take a nap, when I eat lunch, everything is blocked from like 6 a.m. to, you know, 2 a.m. So uh, another alternative to that is something called Tick Tick, which I don't even know if I spelled that right. But if you look it up in the app store, you'll see uh, one of my bosses, like she loves Tick Tick because you get to like cross things off like a to-do list. So it's something to look into. I personally, um, I don't, it's not that I have anything against Tick Tick, it's that I'm just like very accustomed to decal. So that's what I stick to. And the mobile version is even better than the desktop. Um, so I guess phone and email aren't technically apps, but LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter are all available as apps. So everyone I'm sure has those on their phone. But basically I put phone and email because those are the most direct ways and the best ways to be able to reach out to people. Triple asterisk on phone, because since phone is so direct, you almost want to use that the most sparingly. Like you don't want to be texting someone like every day. I mean, and you'd be surprised people are actually 
very willing to give you their personal cell phone number if you come at them correct. And you don't even have to ask, by the way. Like, I'll go to, back when the outside was open, I'd go to events in LA and people, you know, usually I'm not even necessarily talking about music stuff. It's about something else entirely. And then they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I write songs. And they're like, oh, I'm an A&R at where so-and-so, like, send me something. And they'll give me their number. And I'm like, yo, I don't even know you. <laughs> if I was crazy, I would sell this online, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but a, a big part of it is just, like, likability and approach. So if you have their phone number, you can text them. Um, a and R is no offense are notorious for not being responsive. So I always try to also text them on their birthday. They will always respond if you text them on their birthday. I've never, ever, ever, mind you, they might not respond to anything else, but if I'm like, hey, I hope you're doing great, like happy birthday, yada, 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 they will always respond. So it's just like, they like to know that you thought of them in a way that was unrelated to music or anything industry related. So, and it, if you don't know when their birthday is, find out. Um, <clears throat> So the second best way to reach out to people is email. I know everyone loves DMs, but um, anybody who works in any type of professional sense has an email. And a lot of the times, if they give that to you, it's because they prefer to be reached out to that way. Um, if they don't give it to you, you can easily find it uh, through Twitter, through LinkedIn. Email is like, it's out there. And also if they work for a particular label, it usually will be like first name dot last name at like you, you music. I found out so many people's emails just knowing that they work related to like Universal. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Like I already know what your email is. Um, and people sometimes are impressed by that. They're like, oh, I met you. I didn't even give me. I didn't even give you my email, but you found it. So like, having the initiative is something that can be really impressive to people. Otherwise, LinkedIn, which I know is the unsexiest networking app, but people are going to respond. Like, if you want to connect with someone on LinkedIn especially if you don't know them you should be sending a message like i'm i personally am way more likely to accept linkedin requests from strangers if they put a message like oh i met you in the finesse media panel or whatever i'm like oh okay because then there's like some kind of point of contact like if i just get a random cold um request i i might not delete it but i'll just kind of let it sit there because i'm just like who the hell is this <laughs> um so always send like a thoughtful message and even whether you've met them or not always send one and I've, I've had like great success getting responses back. Um, and then Instagram and Twitter, because every, everyone on music is on Instagram, uh, but Instagram DMs are, are easier to send than Twitter DMs because Twitter DMs, if they're not a mutual, a lot of times you can't hit them up unless they have their um, messages open. Um, but either way, regardless of how you reach out to people, just try to maintain a certain level of professionalism. I think sometimes people think because it's Instagram, they can kind of just be whatever, but I will send, Obviously, with Instagram, the message should be like a little shorter, but it should still hit all the points and be professional. Um, and the very last thing, F, is for follow up. And this is probably one of the most important things. Like, you really can't just send one message and expect a response. Like, you have to think about how many other people are also trying to reach out to these ARs or whoever else. Um, and so, usually, I'll send them my initial message. Um, and since after the first message, you can wait maybe like three to four days and it doesn't have to be a full week. But after that, like I wouldn't send it any sooner than like a week or else it can seem a little spammy, but on average, it, ha it can take anywhere between four and six messages just to get one response back. And it's not necessarily because they're ignoring you. It's, it's probably because they haven't seen it, <laughs> especially with Instagram, because the way the DMs are set up, if they're not following you. It goes in like the other folder and then Instagram is a weird way of organizing that. So they honestly might never see it, but that's why if you can get like the email or get them on LinkedIn, it's actually better. Um, but don't be discouraged. Just know that it, it could take a little while to get some kind of response. But if you've already um, been in contact with them one way or another, or if you use like keywords like, oh, I met you online in the Zoom, they're more likely to reach out so make sure like in the very first sentence for the most part if you can you mention hey like we had a discussion on clubhouse or i, I heard you speak in a finesse panel or something if they see that in the preview they're more likely to like click and open that because there's that um common connection um another thing with follow-up is that you have to stay organized like the more you're networking the more people you're gonna have to follow up with the harder it's gonna be to be able to stay in touch with them so ways that i keep track is instagram lets you flag things 
So anytime I'm waiting to get a response, I, I keep it flagged. So that way when I'm, when you go through your kind of like settings on Instagram and you want to see which messages you want to look at, you can pick just the flagged ones. As soon as I get a response from them, I unflag it. Cause at that point I know it's like, okay, I've got like a rhythm going. So that's Instagram. For Google, it's the same thing. So with Gmail, you're allowed to make like tabs to kind of like organize your stuff, like the little flag thing. So I'll, as soon as I send out an email, I'll put a tab on it first attempt. As soon as I send out a second request, I'll change that tab, second attempt. And I just kind of keep updating that. So then I can look through the tabs and then I'll know, oh, did I follow up with this person? I'll, I'll just look through like my first attempt tabs. I'll look through my second attempt tabs. And that's kind of how I figure out which might have fell through the cracks. I'm like, oh, okay, this still has a first attempt tab on it. It's been two weeks. I need to follow up with this person. And also Google is really great at giving you reminders now. They're like, it's been four days. Do you want to follow up? And I'll be like, yeah, I actually do. Um, oh, so one thing I skipped, it doesn't always have to be about work. So like, so, and I think this might've been mentioned actually in the last finesse panel, but there are some times where I'll follow up with somebody and again, I'll be like, yo, happy birthday. <laughs> or I'll be like, oh, like I saw that you were mentioned this billboard article. That's so cool. Congratulations. I also think that yada yada is important. People love it when you big up them. So if, if, and also if they're in music, they're constantly working on something to accomplish something. If their artist gets a plaque, say congratulations. If there are, there's always something happening that they're trying to celebrate and you're going to know because they're going to post it on their Instagram. They're always going to flex. And if the person individually is not posting on their Instagram, the label is posting it because the label Instagram accounts are always updated. So again, this goes back to research. You should know like what kind of projects they're working on. So it might not be on their own Instagram. Their IG might be private, but if you have their email, you'd be like, Hey, like I saw that, you know, Republic posted that, you know, Post Malone has been on Billboard um, Hot 100 for like 177 weeks in a row. And I, and I think that's amazing given that you're the one who's a and him or whatever. And they're going to be like, damn, like the fact that you know that is so cool. And they're going to remember you. So just with follow up, don't always be like, hey, did you listen to that track yet? They hate that and they most likely will put you in spam after that if you do that. Um, but also at the same time, you could hit them with the alley oop and be like, hey, like I saw that you're working on this project. Um, just wanted to send you a couple of beats because I figured that this would be something that might be interesting to this artist. And, you know, again, it's just like always just be thoughtful about the approach, regardless of how you're trying to reach out to them. And the very last thing is that I know not everyone is on Clubhouse and it makes me sad because I want everyone to be on there. But I have this bi-weekly room called Career Hacks where we discuss like different ways that people have been able to kind of hack their careers or find ways that it's been easier for them to achieve, achieve success. So I linked the link there. It's free. Read it through. You can share it with whoever you want. Um, and it also will be updated every two weeks. So just make sure you're checking back on that link for every time um, career hacks happen. So that's it. Sorry. I know that was a lot of talking, but uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Lottie. No, that was perfect and super informative. I even learned some tips. That's a great yes. one. Happy birthday one. Girl, I'm, I'm totally that, honestly, unless they're like totally douchey, they will always respond. I'm telling you, yeah. like they're A and R, so they don't respond to anything I send them. All they respond to are happy birthday and congratulations. That's it. Yep. Everybody likes attention on their birthday. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or acknowledgement if they've, you know, won an award or something. Right, so, right. Exactly. Um, but yeah, thank you so so much. Those are no, really, really great points. Super valuable. Um, so I wanted to go over really quickly, um, like what not to do and then um also kind of piggyback on what um Lottie was talking about with emails so some of the don'ts to do to what not to do is one don't hit up people who don't want to uh be contacted like for example you know we get a lot of music supervisors talking about this like let's say you hit up a music supervisor who would love to, who would love to hear your music, be sure to check their policy. If they have a policy, most professionals don't have time for unsolicited submissions. Um, the is true isn't just about 
listening to your music, it's also being sure that a song is something they can clear easily. So make sure, don't hit up people that explicitly say, don't hit me up, especially if they're like, don't hit me up via whatever source. Um, don't cold call anyone on the phone. I mean, in this day and age, most people don't call people. But in, in the case that you have enough cojones to pick up a phone and call a stranger, just avoid it. Um, because nobody likes a spam call. I certainly don't. And um, industry execs are busy and have multiple ongoing projects. And they, meet, they may be managing dozens of active contacts or waiting for an important call and you calling them, talking about, oh, listen to my artists, they're great. They're gonna hang up on you. So just don't do it. Um, three, don't send attachments in a cold um, email. Um, like, again, every music supervisor that's spoken at one of our events has said attaching music files to an initial email is a rookie mistake. It might even get your email sent to the spam folder, depending on how big your file is. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, send a link to your track or simply introduce yourself and ask them if they'd be interested in receiving a link to your music. Um, one tip I read was to send a w WAV file instead of an MP3. Um, also, four would be don't submit music that isn't exactly within the requested genre or, or style if you have received a creative brief or song style request for from an a r music supervisor producer make sure to give them what they ask for it's not the time to assume that they want to listen to your new single or how versatile you are nothing is more frustrating when you're looking for one thing and you receive something else like if they ask you for something give them what they want um so those are things uh that i would avoid doing so i want to talk about really quickly um perfecting your pitch um and as i said lottie kind of went over some of these points that i'm going to go over um before pitching to anybody get familiar with their work um you know many people have their own brand and distinctive credits so if you're a hip-hop artist and you're pitching to someone who typically works with Indie folk artists, they may like your music, but it won't be the right fit for their brand or their films or whatever it is that they're working on. Um, that being said, I do have some pointers on how to write a good pitch that'll grab someone's attention, whether it's a producer, music blogger, supervisor, a and So follow these guidelines, <clears throat> sorry, to help heighten your chances of getting a response. You wanna keep it simple, outlining major talking points, um, providing easy to use listening links and making saying yes extremely easy are the biggest takeaways. Um, you want to keep your emails about two to four sentences. Sometimes when you're like an artist manager, they tend to be slightly longer. Um, but you don't want to overwhelm anybody with all this information about a release. It's the quickest way to get your email to ignore these people ignore these people are busy and you need them they don't need you but you can convince them to, <laughs> that they need you so just keep that in mind um so the three uh main components to a great pitch are one an intro and a greeting say hello introduce yourself and what you're about um to compliment and um value add so here you're providing purpose and why you're reaching out to them um, specifically and make sure you compliment them. Everybody loves a compliment and that shows that you did your research and you know who you're talking to. And then three would be ask, call to action. What is it that um, you want them to do? Do you want them to check out your music? Do you want them to be part of an event? Um, anything that it is that you want them to do, put it, um, you want to end with a question. Also remember to personalize your emails. You're talking to a human, so you know their time is valuable just as yours. Make sure to personalize it. Like never start an email going hello and then start talking about yourself. Make sure you're saying hello uh, Lottie and team or hello Tiffany and team. That shows that you're specifically writing to them and you're acknowledging them and you're acknowledging that they're human. Um, more often than not, 
also, as um, Lottie was saying earlier, follow, follow up emails are so important. It's sometimes more important than your initial email because it'll keep someone, um, it'll keep you on someone's radar and it, it'll heighten your chances of getting your song listened to, listened to. So yeah, wait a few days to follow up. Don't send an email on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, hit them up because then you're spamming them. So um, I wanted to reach out, uh, I wanted to read out some examples of pitches that I've written and some of our team members have written. Um, this particular email pitch is from Dia, who's part of our finesse media family. <laughs> Shout out to Dia. And she's hosted two very, very successful music supervision panels. Um, so she's really great at getting people uh, to get back to her. So I wanted to share um, her email. So Tiffany is going to share her screen and um, you're going to receive, everyone here is gonna receive these um, email templates. Um, so her email reads, hi Patty, my name is Dia and I'm a manager at Finesse Media Inc., a global music media company. My team and I are hosting a music supervision panel this weekend. I think you would be a great person for aspiring music and film entrepreneurs to learn from. We recently had Jennifer Smith and Jessica, I can't pronounce her name, so I'm just gonna say Jessica G, who are guests on What Up Pitches um, as well. Would you be interested in joining our panel on Saturday? Please let me know your thoughts. So as I said before, you always wanna end your pitch with a call to action. It lets the person reading your email or DM, because this I believe was a IG email, so it's even shorter, that you expect and you hope for a response. Um, so take note of how in Dia's email uh, or DM, she introduced herself and her work. Then she proceeded with her purpose, a compliment and value add, and then finally ending her email with call to action. So the second pitch email I have is um, when I sent out an email to songwriters for a songwriters event, so I'll break it down. So my intro greeting, hello, hello Sasha and team, my name is Justine Milagros, I'm the director of operations at Finesse Media. Finesse Media is a global platform for aspiring music artists and entrepreneurs founded and led by women of color. And then my compliment value add is, we're huge fans of some of your works, run it, love me now, and someone. And we think you'd be a great person for our community to learn from. And then lastly was the call to action. Would you be open to sharing your insights with aspiring songwriters on a virtual Zoom event? Thank you and I look forward to hearing from you. And then the um, third template is for artists. It's an artist pitch. And um, so there's four templates. It's an artist pitch and then an artist manager's pitch that I got from a, um, online, uh, the artist manager one. So that's a great format if you're an artist manager to kind of uh, send how to send your emails in that way. So the artist pitch would be, hello, so-and-so, my name is, you know, Justine. I'm a hip hop artist based out of New York. I'm a big fan of your work and I love the write-up on insert artist name and I think my music style is similar because and you give them a reason I think it fits really well with the vibe of your site I'm releasing a new single single name on September 12th from my upcoming debut album we put in the album name describe briefly what that song is about and then again call to action would you be interested in reviewing it the album is due October 25th here's a link to the track Thanks for listening. And then the second, the third one is a uh, artist uh, manager pitch. Um, quite similar to uh, the artist pitch if it was the artist reaching out directly. Hey Greg, my name is so-and-so and I represent an indie pop duo out of New York called the Awesome Tigers. Uh, James Murphy LCD sound system produced the band's newest LP, Music in My Ears and the band will be opening for LCD Sound System on their upcoming reunion tour for a few dates in New York. Would, insert blog name, would, would be interested in debuting the first single from Music In My Ears 88. The album is due out January 22nd. And then they added the SoundCloud link. 
and thanks for listening, Greg. And the person who wrote this, his name is Nick. And then at the end of the email, this artist manager let the person know that the press um, attaches the press release. So yeah, and those are the three uh, templates that I'll be sharing with you guys. Feel free to use it. Hopefully they're super helpful. And Tiffany is going to share the Google uh, Doc if she hasn't already on the chat box. I've made it public. Um, so typically we tend to end our events with a listening session, but I thought since this is a more intimate uh, event and it's about networking, I wanted to go into breakout rooms and spend the last few moments of the events getting to know each other more personal, personally. So um, I'm, I want you guys to answer these three questions in the breakout room. Um, what are your goals for the next six months? And if, and even if you're not an artist, pretend you're an artist. If you could open up a show for any artist, who would it be? And what is the best advice you've ever been given? So Bobbin, whenever you're ready, you know, break out the rooms. Do you need a minute? <laughs> cool. Um, into how many do you think, like three people per? Uh, let's, how many people do we have? So we have 16. So okay. yeah, three people just evenly okay. distributed. Let's see, let's see how this goes. Let's see how it goes, guys. All right, join. Hey. Hey, how's it going? I'm hey, good. Daddy. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, I guess I, I'm actually in the morning. Oh, uh, hey, Pacific hey. time. Pacific time, exactly. Uh, awesome. Where are you uh, uh, based? Uh, based in Toronto. Where are you guys based oh, in? Nice. Oh. I'm in LA. Oh, cool. Uh, don't mind me, guys. I'm currently in search for ube ice cream, and I have no luck here right now. <laughs> Did you say ube ice cream, like the um, the the purple? Yeah, you got it. Oh my god, so good. Yeah, unfortunately, no luck. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how long? How long have you been doing music for, or what's your specialty? Uh, yeah. So I I'm an artist songwriter. I've been I've been like making music for a long time, um, but I just started like producing earlier this year. And um, yeah, and I have an album coming out in less than a month, I think at this point, which is crazy. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yay. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, congrats in advance. Thank you. Yeah, and it's definitely time to start like reaching out, um, but uh, yeah, gotta get on that. <laughs> uh, so, which also brings up um, actually the question I was asked. So, what what are your goals for the six months? Like besides, you know, completing and showcasing your music. Yeah, I um, for the next six months, I guess this um, obviously for the next couple months, it'll be focused on the album and um, just getting that out and like hopefully promoting it. I actually strangely like am not as concerned about the pro like I think my first concern was just like making sure the music was there and that like I was super happy with the project and then it just like had a home um out in kind of the universe and then um I was planning to sort of just like pitch it out and do that as time went so I wasn't as concerned with I know a lot of friends who um want to get their their albums like you know premiered in this particular spot and, and reviewed and all that stuff um which i've had some like really nice reviews in the past and i'm definitely gonna you know pitch as well but um less concerned about that because um i know people who've gotten stuck where they've got really good stuff that they're just sitting on and because they're waiting for you know a pr spot um so yeah i think and this this album's like very much in 
uh, it's like very personal to me and I really wanted to tell this story. And I think like this year in particular, like I had the goal of putting it out. So, um, so that's, that's like immediately, but then for the next six months, I really want to, cause this, this experience has really been like, just like time pressure to get something done and out which is really important for me actually, because I, I, for a long, for the longest time, I was like making music and not really finishing it. Um, so I want to just like get it out. And then um, my next goal is to like collaborate. So collaborate as much as possible, kind of have like no necessarily like deadlines for myself, um, but just like explore and work with, um, work with more people. So yeah, hopefully I'll get, something going with Lottie soon. I'm like such a big fan. So uh, uh, Lottie, <laughs> yeah. you have to definitely uh, let her know, reach out to her. And make oh yeah. The, make the magic yeah. happen. For sure. We've, we've been like DM DMing. I, I like, I think back in uh, September, we were talking about like October and then October just got insane for the album for me. Um, so soon. <laughs> yeah. So who would you want to open up for? uh artist. like as an artist yeah Ooh. Mm. i know it's, it, that's a tough question i'm like well, who would i What's that? i know right i mean i definitely have like the artists that i'm um huge fan of uh but i don't know if i like i'm trying to think like my music style uh who i would open up for it may like i i love maggie rogers oh. i don't know if i would be yeah, I think I could probably do an opening act because um, I have more of like the like the guitar folk type stuff. Um, but I also really love um, the artist like Ma, who's a Danish artist, um, and Lord love Lord, but she hasn't really been doing too much unless yeah. she's like working on something. But yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was gonna say with artists like they always like surprise us somehow. It's like, oh, you dropped an album today? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <random>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Jingle. exactly. Yep. So I'm just like waiting for the day, I guess, when that surprise drops. But um, yeah, it's a good question. I have to like, probably like think about. It. There's tons of artists that I would love to open for, but right, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I would love to, like, uh, I guess, Courtney, I don't know if we've actually met before. I'd love to. I don't think, I don't think so. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Courtney. How y'all doing? Good. So, yes, I am a um, songwriter from Ohio, but right now I'm actually managing an artist. So I've been more so focused on more so the managed side instead of the artist side or the songwriting side. So... I guess for like the next six months, it's gonna be split. I really want to focus on getting my artist in the best possible position. Like we're working on getting his project done and shooting videos and getting content done. But then I'm also gonna start focusing more on writing again, cause I kind of stepped back from it. So the next six months I am trying to make sure I'm spreading my energy evenly. Yeah, that's so important especially like just being organized and just giving mm -hmm. yourself like certain yeah. deadlines because I mean I know myself if it's like not on paper if I don't have the time frame or the schedule my brain will just explode right <laughs> so but I was gonna say so songwriting how long have you been doing songwriting for uh, did you freeze Courtney oh gosh yeah I think she did <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. oh no, Courtney, come back. Oh no. I think she froze. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully she'll come back. Yeah. Uh, what, about, what about you, Nick? Yeah, what's going uh, on with you, Nick? Uh, not too much. Um, I've been actually in the music for the last 12 years, but um, over the last few months, I actually switched over my stage name. So I'm kind of rebranding everything over. Awesome. Um, What's your new uh, stage name? Um, under Stonum, which is the last parts of my first, middle, and last name. Oh, Stonum. unique. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so it, an anagram of sorts. So um, I, I currently have um, 
a project that's coming out under a small independent label. Oh, nice. Uh, and that's coming out next month. So the next four to six months um, is part of the whole rebranding re scheme where it's just um, at least getting 100 people uh, familiar with the music because um, I've kind of, uh, with the rebranding, it's really necessary to get people aware of what, who I am again and what I do. And uh, I figured that starting with 100 people is a good uh, number. Yeah. Well, at least with and having a target of at least 30 to 50 percent out of that 100 just so i'm not um saying i need 100 people straight just if i have 30 to 50 people at the end of my goal that's fine um so that's just what goal. yeah so so, sort of what you were mentioning earlier dia where it was just having to put things out on a calendar mm -hmm. and and even just thinking three to four projects ahead and just knowing what the end game is at the end of four releases. Um, so this is kind of the beginning stepping stone. So I have a question for you. So like what made you decide to like rebrand? Um, I think that the old name I had, it was unfortunately too similar to other artists. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important where if you're talking to somebody and you, they ask what your artist name is, if they can't remember it in a couple goes, then it's kind of, you're a bit of in trouble. Um, and then having it coupled with, having your music coupled with on a playlist with another artist of a similar name didn't really help at all too. Um, so I found it kind of necessary to change that up. That's smart. And you know, it's kind of similar to like Lil Bow Wow and like Lil Romeo. Like at one point I felt like there were so many like Lil's so I couldn't even yeah, keep up there's myself. Still, there's yeah. still so many Lil's. Yeah, exactly. There's so many and I'm like, wait, who's this another little this another okay I, I can't keep up the baby little baby i'm like okay now there's a bunch of babies now <laughs> bad baby <laughs> oh, oh yeah <laughs> bad baby. Exactly. exactly so i'm like i can't keep up with it but like you make a good point like you know it's always good to like have a distinctive persona mm -hmm. um that stands out compared to like being similar to someone else so that's smart you know, especially the rebranding that you have. That's yeah, at, and mind you, like I had a I had a good run with the name, mind you. It's just that it's, yeah, it becomes something that you want to be able to live with for the rest of your life, and that's the that's the main important part there. That's right. So I was also going to ask you too, like, who would you open up for? Ooh, tough question. <laughs> yeah, it is a tough question only because uh, I actually do several different genres. Okay. Yeah, so right now the next project I'm putting out is kind of like an East Coast hip hop album. And uh, so I would probably put the, the roots closely because that's what the sound is like at the moment. Ooh. That's awesome. I was going to say, and the roots are so iconic too. Uh, yeah, yeah. What what other genres do you do? Uh, I so don't feel that way, <laughs> where I'm like in fifteen genres. <laughs> yes. So um, the before this one, I was doing. I actually did an indie album. Oh, dope. So a lot, a lot of soul and soul and pop influences, and then the one before that was a full jazz project. And each wow. one of them, each one of them did pretty well on the Canadian radio charts. So. Um, it, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they receive this one with a different name change and all that stuff. That's awesome. Wow. And, and I mean, you know, oh, I'm so sorry to cut you off. I was going to say Courtney seems to be back. Yeah, Car Courtney's back. Oh, no, wait. I think she's frozen again. Uh, oh, we wait. got you, Courtney. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. See yes, I'm shot. back. I don't know what happened. They just cut off. Yeah, it's hmm. so strange. Okay. No. Yeah, we can at least hear Sorry, you. Everybody. There we go. Okay, now you can good. you see me? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. So we're so sorry about everything sorry, before. I don't know what happened. They kept trying to connect like three or four times too, and it just... 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, this is, uh, Courtney, if you wouldn't mind uh, explaining before, like, what you were mentioning with songwriting, I know before the um, internet got cut off. Um, what was that? I can't even remember. Okay, yeah, the songwriting. I know that for the next six months, I will try to, um, I'm going to try to stay focused and start doing everything like I said, split it half and half with the management side for my artists, but also dedicating more time to actually trying to get some songs out and getting getting them placed and everything like that. Hmm. What kind of songs do you, or I guess what, what genres? We were just talking about them. <laughs> yeah. Mostly uh, like R&B, pop type stuff. I've also started, I took, I've taken a, a sync class. So I'm actually trying to start songwriting for sync placements too, which mm -hmm. is a little bit different. Nice. Um, so I'm going to try to do that as well. And how's that going? So far, it's it's a little bit different because, like I said, it's a different type of style. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have to kind of push myself to write a different way. But as of right now, I haven't started pitching anything towards any like sync supervisors or anything like that. So I do have a question for you guys, like songwriters, musicians. Cause I, that's something that I'm not. So like, do you guys have like a specific routine when it comes to like your creative, your creative mindset or creative ideas when it comes to like songwriting or creating music? Like everyone has like a specific routine, you know, whereas like everyone claims like Adele, for example, like if she goes through like a breakup, like she's going to have a crazy album. <laughs> so do you guys have something like similar where you have like a routine, like gets you guys going? Yeah, I, I don't really have necessarily a, like, I know some, I have some friends who, um, like, every day they have to work on, they have to, like, write a song, <laughs> or, um, and I, I definitely, uh, I don't necessarily work like that. I think I, um, I'm the type of person as well who's, like, always just coming up with ideas and then putting them down in my, like, notes on my phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then every so often I'll – so, I, I, yeah, I definitely am more of, I guess, an inspiration hits kind of person. But I would say um, that's definitely been more of a thing that I've been disciplined about, like, this year. So what I'll do is, like, earlier – so one of my tracks that's out, um, Fast Life, that was – written during like a week I basically took a week and was like this is my songwriting camp for myself <laughs> um and so I I tried to you know have and it's it's funny too because I just like over the years I've written a ton and ton and ton of songs um and so like I think recently I haven't been writing as much new material unless I'm collaborating with somebody um and that process is really fun for me like i i think that's pretty much like how um i've been writing new material aside from you know just like coming up with things like and and i do think you're um to i guess the point of adele after a breakup has like a ton of material um definitely like your emotional state uh, affects a lot so there's just certain times where i just feel like i need to sit at the piano and just start writing um, and that definitely happened a lot this year with like the pandemic. Um, so there were yeah. just days, like you can just feel it, I think. And I, I think I just got really used to feeling like, like knowing when I needed to just like, you know, get it out. Cause songwriting for me is like just a way to process my like thoughts and emotions. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I guess not really a specific routine, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks curious to saying. hear what you guys what process you guys have um for process uh i normally just lock a date in on when to do it i think having like a routine set for one day out the week for example recording or another day for songwriting um i think the more that i like it goes back to that Google calendar thing where it's just, like I said, it's like an accountability thing. If there's a reminder on there, um, that then it kind of forces you into a habit. Um, the other thing is if the ideas don't come, they don't come. So um, if it takes a week, you let a week sit out. Um, and then sometimes even in the process of doing songwriting, I think it's being able to have different techniques. So for example, just mumbling something 
you like you have a, a composition down or an instrumental part, but you don't know what the words are, but you have a rhythm behind it. So kind of just mumbling things in mm-hmm. until it starts turning into words. Um, so, you know, um, I think I only have like a few, to be honest. That's actually a really good point because I yeah. like, oh, 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 okay, we got Courtney back. Because <laughs> um, I, yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point, actually, because I um, have heard, uh, or at least when I, I used to go into this one particular studio and um, the producer there was always saying like, melody, 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 like number one, like the way that I think a lot of songs start is like mumbling. A lot of, a lot of my songs too, if it's, if it's melody, like, especially if I'm sent a beat and then I start, right. It's always just like, you feel it. And then you write a melody and a lot of it's just like mumble, mumble, mumble. And then it sort of like starts to take shape. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, melody is always the first thing. Uh, sometimes the words come with the melody. Sometimes like, I guess I have so many like lyric ideas and maybe like 5% of them make it into <laughs> an actual song because like the melody is so important. Um, so yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I think. So how about you, Courtney? Like, do you have any routines when it comes to songwriting? Not, not really, not a routine, um, which I think I'm going to start doing that because it'll make me more disciplined. Whereas like, like, as Nick was saying, scheduling, um, because it would go a few days without writing something in those days, turn in the week and the next thing you know, it's been months since you wrote some, like a, a real song, right? So for me, I usually just kind of go by the feeling or if I'm just like, I, you can kind of stem off of that. But other times if I'm not really feeling it has happened, I'll just go through a couple of different beats or go, or producers will send me something and I just listen to it a couple of times and see if I get anything from that. Like you can pull off the melody or whatever it, if you play the music and it sounds like a club song, does it sound like a ballad? And you just kind of just start writing ideas as they come. And it, and it really just, I can write one word and say, okay, this, I want to use this word and then build a whole song around one word or a feeling or, or a memory that the music kind of gives you. Um, but I've used different techniques. Some is just, I'll write a song without a beat and then try to find a beat that matches or to have a producer build a beat around that. Or I'll just go and listen to a, a whole bunch of different songs and see or a whole bunch of different beats and see what's sparking for that particular moment. And then just try to write something, whether it be a hook or a phrase or anything, and just keep trying to build, build and build. And if you can't, like, sit it down for a little bit, come back to it. Let it sit for a week, come back to it. And just try to keep building until you can get a complete song. Or if you can't complete it, that's when you reach out to other songwriters and say, hey, this is what I've got so far. Like, what's your take on it? Let's collaborate. Let's try to see what, what ideas you get from it. So in speaking of collabs, um, would you guys say when it comes to like reaching out to different artists or like producers or other songwriters, would you say like Instagram is like your go-to or do you prefer like emailing or like Facebook groups? Uh, no real rule of thumb, I I think. Um, and it always becomes like something where you have to be familiar of the person's work too. Um, and, you know, and just having the the pitch as well um, in terms of how you communicate with them is key. I find there hasn't been really any difference um, between all the different social media platforms when communicating with them. Yeah. And would you say like with the pandemic, was there like a difference when it comes to that or not so much? It's kind of still been the same. Uh, not so, I don't think so much. I think, I think if anything, I'm, on my side, a, a lot of it has slowed down in terms of artists that I've been around. Oh. Oh, I guess. Oh, we lost oh. Courtney. We lost <laughs> Nick. I was going to say, well, in about a minute, we're going to go back to... Um, the panel but this is cool i like the breakout rooms you know i'm so glad we were able to talk and chat a little bit yeah and also dia I just if my zoom was acting right i probably would have actually heard most of y'all yeah. on this part of the conversation <laughs> no 
know. Sorry, guys. But no, this is not- my first breakout room. I, I don't know anything about Zoom breakout rooms. Oh, really? I like awesome. it, though. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, this is fun. I actually don't know how these are set up, but these are fun. Um, yeah no I, I totally agree it's yeah. everyone's it's like random too so you can just meet whoever and just go talk with whoever and just network box yeah like uh, the launch page or whatever yeah yeah so um because i want to talk about the membership really quickly oh, oh yeah um i think i just did yeah i did oh okay up, yeah. <laughs> i put that I put the Google Doc. I put everything in there. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> and we're all back. Um, yeah, thank you guys. I hope you guys uh, got to know everyone a little bit better and that this was um, extremely helpful for everyone. Um, I had a lot of fun in the breakout room. Shout out to Taylor and Juke the Kid. <laughs> um, so uh, before we head out, please. Uh, you know, put, if you haven't already, put your Instagram, your emails, and connect. Um, Tiffany's gonna, Taylor, Tiffany's gonna put the uh, Google Doc again, uh, so everyone can get connected. Uh, so Finesse Media, um, just, we just launched our membership program, so if you really enjoyed today's event, I would highly recommend joining our membership. It's only five dollars a month, and you get to join all of these events for free, and um, typically when we do have listening sessions, if you're not a member, you would have to pay $21 to get your uh, music heard. But if you're a member, um, the submit, uh, submitting a song is absolutely free. And like I said, we, can, we get connected with uh, really great people. We've had um, Charlene Bryant, who's um, the manager for Trippy Bed. We've had Loki L. We've had, you know, the executive of uh, the Guild of Music Supervisors, Hunter George, Young T- uh, Little Babies producer, Young TN. So we've had some really influential people. So it's, you know, Finesse Media is definitely a place you want to get your music heard and get some one-on-one advice and interactions with people. Um, and when you go on the site, it'll explain the different tiers and what you get on um, the different tiers. Uh, so I really, really hope everyone had a amazing time and that you guys found uh found this valuable next week we'll have another event as well um so just stay tuned on that and otherwise i hope you guys have a great day and a beautiful weekend ahead thank you thank you guys thank you guys it was great you guys seriously Bye, guys. and also um if you want to reach me, my uh, Instagram is Justine underscore Sade. I'll just leave it on here. So you feel free to follow me if you want. Um, just give me one second. I'm going to write it on here. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, just shoot me a message. I'll respond. So anyways, guys, um, have a great weekend. And... It was lovely hearing from you guys. Appreciate everyone. Please reach out. Thank you.